Welcome fellow bookworms to Riz Den. My name is Whitney and today I have my September TBR, which is also my birthday TBR because my birthday is mid-September. So I'm really excited for this. I typically do create TBRs. I'm not a mood reader. Um, and generally when I create those TBRs, I do look at books that I'm interested in reading, but I also have books that I need to prioritize as well. So I do have four books that are part of my ABC Author Challenge and my 25 Days of Bookmas books that I do need to read in order to make sure I complete both those um, this year. So those are on there, but luckily I am actually really, really excited for the books that are are up next for both of those. So um, that works out nicely. And then I have books for my pre-birthday book haul uh, that I'm excited to read for the month and everything. So we'll go ahead and jump right in. The first book I'm going to talk about, I ended up getting because I had kind of, I had completed my August TBR a few days early um, and nothing that I had physically was really calling to me. So I had seen this all over booktube and it was one that I was really interested in but I didn't want to order um, a physical copy of, especially brand new, when I had already, you know, did my pre-birthday book haul and got a bunch of new books. So I had heard really good things about the audiobook, which if you follow my channel, you'll know I'm a physical reader. I I need the sensory input I get from physically reading a book that I don't get with ebooks or audiobooks. But in the past, I have successfully listened to audiobooks if they've been nonfiction. And this one was a nonfiction. It was I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Um, which I heard really, really good things about the audiobook in particular because she narrates it herself. Uh, and 100%, like, I enjoyed it so much. Like, it's heartbreaking. Uh, and it definitely has a lot of trigger warnings, you know, for eating disorders, addiction, abuse, and such. Um, a lot of trauma, for sure. But listening to her narrate it, like, the emotion is definitely there listening to her. So if you're interested in that book, get the audiobook, even if you're not a big audiobook fan, because 100% worth it. So anyway, my point on that is because I did that audio and I went through Audible, um, because I didn't have Audible already, I'm like in the free trial period and you get two credits. So I got that one. And then I ended up getting Priory of the Orange Tree because... It's been one I've been interested in. I'm not sure how it's going to go because I'm not a big audiobook fan, but I have to go up to my mom. She's having surgery, so I'm going to be watching her dogs for her while she's having surgery, uh, and that is like a five-hour drive, and so it'll get me not quite halfway um, listening to that, but I can listen to it up there as well. So it's like 25 hour book, like it's a chunky book, which is one of the reasons why I've been hesitant and it hasn't been like high priority for me to pick up because I know it's a chunky book and I have so many books like on my TBR that I was like, eh, not sure about it. So since I had that extra credit, um, that one was one that caught my eye and I figured it's perfect for the road trip I'm taking. So um, that will be not until the second week in September, but that one I'll be listening to, like I said, while I'm driving and then a little bit probably while I'm up there as well. So that's the first one. The next one, I don't know what the book is yet. So I had gotten this several hauls ago and this is a mystery book from Barnes and Noble. And so all I know about it is it's classic literature, magical realism, and 20th century. So that's all I know. This was recommended by somebody named Abigail. Uh, and so yeah, this one I'm going to be opening and reading on my birthday. I'm kind of going to have a cozy day. Um, I'll sit with this, probably have a movie on, some hot cocoa or something, some kind of treat for me, uh, and just sit and read this one. So I'm really excited to finally open it and see what it is and hopefully it does not disappoint. 
But if it does, I have lots of other books to read as well. So um, either way, I'm going to have my cozy reading day. It's just whether it's this one, um, if if I enjoy it or if I'm not feeling it, I'll go with something else. So, But finally going to be getting to that one. Um, I was kind of saving it to see if I just needed a day where I kind of needed a pick-me-up. Um, and I was going to open it and kind of have a cozy day. So... Next, let's go ahead and talk about the books that I need to prioritize. Like I said, these are books I'm excited for. Uh, and so first up is for my ABC Author Challenge. I'm on the letters uh, R and S now. First up, we have Lucinda Riley, and this is The Orchid House. And so I'm really, really exciting, excited for this one. It's been sitting up there, and I've been eyeballing it. Uh, and now's finally a time I get to read it. So I'll go ahead and read you guys the synopsis. It says, as a child, concert pianist Julia Forrester spent many idyllic hours in the hot house of Wharton Park, the grand estate where her grandfather tended exotic orchids. Years later, while struggling with overwhelming grief over the death of her husband and young child, she returns to this tranquil place. There she reunites with Kit Crawford, heir to the estate and her possible salvation. When they discover an old diary, Julia seeks out her grandmother to learn the truth behind a love affair that almost destroyed the estate. Their search takes them back to the 1940s when Harry, a former heir, a former heir to Wharton Park, married his young society bride, Olivia, on the eve of World War II. When the two lovers are cruelly separated, the impact will be felt for generations to come. This atmospheric story alternates between the magical world of Wharton Park and uh, Thailand during World War II. Filled with twists and turns, passions and lies, and ultimately redemption, The Orchid House is a beautiful, romantic, and poignant novel. So, um, sounds like historical fiction, which I always really, really enjoy. Um, and I just, I love the cover of this one. I think it's so beautiful. Um, and then on the back too. So, uh, this one, even though it's a, a kind of mandatory priority to read, it's one I been super excited to get to so the next one for my s author is nevermore by harold shester i'm not sure really how to pronounce that last name but this is obviously edgar Allan poe inspired um and so this one says a literary critic known for his scathing pen, Edgar Allan Poe is a young, struggling writer plagued by dreadful ruminations and horrific visions. Suddenly, he is plunged into an adventure beyond his wildest fantasies, a quest for a killer through Baltimore's highest and lowest streets and byways. A string of ghastly murders is linked by one chilling crew, clue. A cryptic word scrawled in blood it is a terrifying lure that ensnares Poe in a deadly investigation. And along the way, his own macabre literary imagination is sparked as he unveils dark realities stranger than any fiction. Um, so it is a mystery, obviously, and I am excited. Like, this cover caught my attention. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really, really excited to get to this one as well. Next up is for my 25 Days of Book Mist, and these two are ones that I am really, again, excited for. Like, um, they're not my most anticipated based on the synopsis, but they're ones I think I'm really going to enjoy. Um, and so first up is Haunt Me Still by Jennifer Lee Car Carell. Um, and so yeah, I'll go ahead and read the synopsis for this one. This is kind of based on Shakespeare a little bit, but says the bard's witch-haunted play is famously cursed, its reputation for malevolence so strong that many actors refuse to quote or even name the play aloud. And as Kate Stanley begins rehearsals at the foot of Scotland's Dunsinan Hill, it doesn't take long for the curse to stir. Strange references emerge to the boy actor who first played Lady Macbeth in Shakespeare's day and died in the role. A trench atop the hill is found filled with blood shortly after some of the actors go missing, and a mysterious tarot card leads Kate into the woods, where she finds a local woman dead in circumstances that suggest not just ritual murder, but ancient pagan sacrifice. With Kate marked as both suspect and future victim, she and Ben Pearl, the man who saved her life as she chased Shakespeare's lost play, find themselves in a desperate race to discover a dangerous version of Macbeth 
said to contain actual rituals of witchcraft and forbidden knowledge. However much Kate would like to dismiss such rituals as superstition, someone else appears willing to kill for them and for the cursed manuscript said to be Shakespeare's darkest secret. So, um, yeah, I just, I'm excited. It sounds like it's going to be really atmospheric um, and such. So really, really excited to get to this one as well. And then the other one, which I've been eyeballing as well ever since I got it last December, is A Rebel Heart by Beth White. And this is part of the Daughtry House series. So this is the first one in the series. And it says, five years after the final shot was fired in the war between the states, Sela Daughtry can barely manage to keep herself, her two young sisters, and their spinster cousin fed and clothed. With their family's Mississippi plantation swamped by debt and the big house falling down around them, the only option seems to be giving up their ancestral land until a hotel management agent for the railroad offers her hope for the future. If she'll turn her home into a hotel... Levi Riggins says he can all but guarantee it will be saved. Sella isn't sure she entirely, entirely trusts the handsome Yankee. Yet what other option does she have? She'll have to stay on her guard, but she never expected to have to guard her heart. So, again, another historical, like, romance. And I'm really, really excited for that one. Um, excited is the word of the day. So, <laughs> next up is another one. Um, I'm going to be reading the second in this trilogy, uh, I've been reading the trilogy aloud with my husband, so we read The Awakening in August, and for September we are going to be reading The Becoming. And so this one you have Breen, and she ends up learning, you know, that she has inherited a bunch of money. Well, he's been sending her a bunch of money her father has um, for years, and she's, you know, got close to $4 million dollars. Uh, which her mother has been keeping from her, and her mother's very hard on her and just tries to keep Breen down. So Breen ends up going to Ireland, kind of searching for her heritage, and she ends up finding this land called Tala, which is another realm, essentially, which has elves and fairy and uh, mermaids and all kinds of were creatures and such. So this is the second book in this series. So in this one, um, I think... She ends up um, continuing to train. And in the first one, her love interest, Keegan, it was a very slow burn. So you didn't see a whole lot. Um, and then it was kind of just a mile apart towards the end. So I'm hoping we'll see more of a development with that. And she has Marco now is with her in Tala, which is her best friend. So um, excited to see where this one takes us, especially because the first one was a bit slow. Um, so I'm hoping there's a little bit more action in this one for sure. Let's see. Next, um, we're going to be reading Matilda by Roald Dahl. So this is one, I've never read it. I've never read anything by this author, but Matilda, the movie, was one of my favorites growing up. Watched it all the time. Uh, and so when I was doing some of my hauls, trying to fill in my boxcar children books, um, I ordered this to kind of beef up the order I had because she had free shipping when she spent so much, um, which the seller actually couldn't find the boxcar children. And she was so nice and sent me the other ones I had added to the order um, just free of charge. So this is one I'll be reading because Roald Dahl was a Virgo. Um, so I can't remember... I'll find the video, but I was watching recommendations for Virgos, reading recommendations for Virgos, so I'll leave, leave that video linked down below. Um, and this was one of the authors that was recommended because he is a Virgo as well. Um, and since I had Matilda, I just got it. I was like, yes, definitely going to be reading that one. So that's up as well. Of course, if you don't know Matilda, you basically have... Um, her and her parents aren't very good and so she basically is very self-sufficient takes care of herself and she has magic powers that she's learning about as well so um let's see next let's get into some of the ones actually let's do these ones and then we'll get into some of the ones I hauled so I am working on reading my Nora Roberts books um since I have the complete collection now and so I was kind of thinking what I wanted to read this month other than The Awakening, because like I said, I'm reading that with my husband. 
and I decided I wanted kind of the autumn atmosphere. Um, there's one trilogy I'm waiting, I thought about, but I'd rather wait till October because it's more like horror esque um, or like dark fantasy I guess would be more accurate and so this one I decided because it has really good atmosphere um, and so this is the trilogy um, the Three Sisters Island trilogy and so I have Dance Upon the Air, Heaven and Earth, and Face the Fire and so this is about these witches um, in this first one I think you have what's her name I want to say Nell yeah you have Nell and she's escaping her abusive husband. And so she ends up faking her death and ends up on the Three Sister Island trilogy, or the Three Sisters Island. Um, and her love interest is one of the other characters' brother, and he's sheriff. And this one in particular is has the vibes I'm looking for, the autumn vibes. Like she works in this little bookstore, um, and I just remember reading it and just it has those autumn vibes like perfectly. So that's the first one. And the next one you have Ripley, who is the sister of the sheriff from the first one. Um, and Ripley does not really embrace her magic powers. She wants nothing to do with them, um, but she's having to work with them for Nell's sake. Um, and then there's also her love interest, which is a reporter who has come to um, kind of investigate the Three Sister Island, essentially, and learn more about it, and in turn, you know, wants to know more about her and her powers. And then the last one, we have Face the Fire, so you can see you have the elemental aspect. And in this one, I forget her name. <laughs> lots, lots of names here. Mia. So in this one, you have Mia. Um, and she and Ripley kind of have a strained relationship. They grow up together. They were really close, but, um, just there's a lot of tension between them because Ripley denies her gift where Mia really embraces it. And then her love interest, Sam, was another one who grew up and he represents the water element. Um, but he left and so, um, kind of like a second chance romance with those two. But I just remember the witchy atmosphere and kind of it did give autumn vibes, especially in the first book. So really excited to reread those and they should be quick and easy. Next is one I am so happy I picked up and I cannot wait to read. And that is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. And this is first in the Regency Fairy Tales series. And this one I heard so many good things about. So... Um, I am really, really excited to read this and I think I'm going to love it. So of course I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for the series as it continues. But it says, ever since she was cursed by a fairy, Theodora Eddings had no sense of fear or embarrassment, an unfortunate condition that leaves her prone to accidental scandal. Dora hopes to be a quiet, sensible wallflower during, during the London season. But when Elias Wilder, the handsome, peculiar, peculiar and utterly ill-mannered Lord Sorcerer, discovers her condition, she is instead drawn into a dangerous fairies of, fairy affairs. If her reputation can survive both the, her curse and her sudden connection with the least like man in all high society, then she and her family may yet reclaim their normal place in the world. But the longer Dora spends with Elias, the more she begins to suspect that one may indeed fall in love, even with half a soul. Um, and so it's kind of super, um, supernatural, like fantasy meets like Regency period. And just heard really, really good things about it. So really excited to read that one. That's probably going to be one of the first ones I read, if I'm honest. So next, I debated whether to save this for October or not, but I'm just really excited about it. And so I decided I wanted to go ahead and read it for September. And that is Death Note. This is by Sugumi Oba and the illustrations by Takeshi Obata. Um, and so this is the Black Edition Volume 1, which contains Volume 1 and 2 of the series itself. Uh, and so I've been interested in trying manga 
Um, and this one, I wanted Spy Family. If you saw my haul, I actually wanted to start with Spy Family with my manga debut. Um, but they didn't have the first volumes. They only had like later volumes. And so I didn't want to start later, obviously. Uh, and this one is one I've seen around and it does sound intriguing to me. So it says, Lai Iagami is an A student with great prospects and he's bored out of his mind. But all that changes when he finds the Death Note, a notebook dropped by a rogue Shinigami death god. Any human whose name is written in the notebook dies. And now Light has vowed to use the power of the Death Note to rid the world of evil. Will Light's noble goal succeed or will the Death Note turn him into the very thing he fights against. So, so this has volumes one and two, and I think I'm really going to enjoy this. Um, at least the pr premise of it sounds right up my alley, and story-wise, I'll enjoy it. It's just, I'm not sure about reading it as a manga, so. But pretty excited about that one. So like I said, I couldn't wait till October for that one. Then I have a duology, and so I'm going to be reading Pirate of the Daughter king and daughter uh, hold on not pirate of the daughter king daughter of the pirate king <laughs> and daughter of the siren queen by trisha levenseller my words got all mixed up in my head there um i'm getting way too excited so this is one i have seen around a little bit um, and somebody, again, I can't remember, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find that video because it's been months, but they were recommending, like, pirate books, and I saw that, and I was really interested in this, and saw the last copy on the table at Barnes & Noble, and decided to go ahead and pick it up, and then saw this one as I was walking out. I was like, well, of course I have to get that one, too. So, anyway, these were kind of more impulse buys. Um, but it says, sent on a mission to retrieve an ancient hidden map, the key to a legendary treasure trove, 17-year-old pirate captain Alosa deliberately allows herself to be captured by her enemies, giving her the perfect opportunity to search their ship. More than a match for the ruthless pirate crew, Alosa has only one thing standing between her and the map, her captor. The unexpectedly clever and unfairly attractive first mate ridden. But not to worry, for Alosa has a few tricks up her sleeve, and no lone pirate can stop the daughter of the Pirate King. So, I'm not going to read the synopsis for this one, just in case it has spoilers. But, I love a good pirate story, so I'm really excited to add these. I think they're going to be really enjoyable, and that's the name of the game. I want just enjoyable reads. Nothing that's too heavy or intense for September. Which brings us to the next book, which is Finlay Donovan Knocks Some Dead. So this is the second in the Finlay Donovan series, excuse me, by Al Casamano. I read the first one um, a couple months ago. And again, I'm not a big, like, cozy mystery fan. And I loved the first one. Like, I thought it was really, really enjoyable. I thought it was funny. Um, it reminded me kind of of my sister a little bit. So, when I saw this at Barnes & Noble, again, last copy. Those last copies, probably not the last copy. They probably have more in the back. But it definitely tricks you. Because it's like, oh, there's only one left. I gotta get it. Um, so, anyway, I'm excited to continue on with Finley Donovan and see, see where this one takes us. If you're not familiar with it, uh, in the first one, Finley Donovan is a struggling author, a single mom, and she's meeting with her agent at a Panera, and they're talking about the plot of her next book, and somebody overhears her and thinks that she's a murderer for, a murderer for hire, essentially. Um, and so that kind of just ends up <laughs> taking on a life of its own. And at the end of the first book, she gets another note. Um, and so I think that's kind of going to be where this takes us. And I'm really excited. I hope it's just as quirky and fun as the first one was. Um, so that's the next one. And I'm running out of space here. Then these next few, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to or not. Because, you know, obviously a lot of books to read here. But I'm hoping to. So I read Cinder again a couple months ago. And ended up loving it. And basically, this is by Marissa Meyer. You have Cinder, and she is a cyborg, and she's a mechanic in this kind of... It's kind of like a 
sci-fi retelling of Cinderella. Um, and so she ends up kind of getting involved with the prince, Prince Kai, of this world. Um, and then there's these lunar people that are set to attack. And so Cinder's more Cinderella retelling. So I ended up ordering <laughs> from Thrift Books, luckily, because when I found copies on, like, Pango um, and elsewhere, they were kind of expensive. Um, but I ended up getting these from Thrift Books, and they weren't too bad. And so I'm hoping to read the next two in the series. I got, there's four in the main series, and then there's, like, little novellas. Um, and so I got all of them. So I did get Ferris, which is Levina's story. Uh, and then I got, um, Stars Above, which is, like, a collection of short stories that are in that story verse. Um, and so you got, like, the wolf's backstory and such, which, well, the wolf is in this one. And so I'm hoping to read at least Scarlet, if not both Scarlet and Cress. So this one is more Little Red Riding Hood, um, inspired, but still following Cinder. And then this one is more Rapunzel, I believe, inspired based on the hair and everything. So, um, so yeah, I'm really excited for both of these. Hopefully I'll have time to get to them. They're kind of thicker, but they're really easy to read based on how Cinder read. Uh, and I just, I haven't stopped thinking about the story. And Cinder kind of ended, it felt unresolved. It really wasn't a cliffhanger, I would call it, but it just felt unresolved to me. Uh, so I'm hoping this one picks up right where it left off in Cinder and then kind of goes into Scarlet's story. Um, but either way, I'm really excited. If I don't get to these in September, they'll definitely be going on to October. Um... And then hopefully if I get to them, I'll be able to read the others in October. So there are those ones. And then the last one I'm going to be trying to get to is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. Of course, everybody's a big fan of Sarah J. Mass and of Akatar series in general. I've never read anything by this author. I haven't really been drawn to just because she is so hyped and that always kind of puts me off a little bit. Um, but I found this one at a thrift store and I am intrigued. I do have to say I am intrigued. I do think I'm going to love it, uh, which kind of worries me a little bit, but yeah, I'll finally be jumping on the Akatar bandwagon with this one. Uh, hopefully, like I said, I'm probably going to prioritize this one over Scarlet and Cress. Um, just because if I don't have enough time, I'd rather read this one and then binge read the series uh, the Lunar Chronicles in October. So we shall see. But yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to get to that one as well. Um, but yeah, those are the books. I did think about reading, this is another one I picked up, The Hollow Places by T. King Fisher. And so I might end up reading this one, but I doubt it. Um, because I really want to save this one for October because it's more horror vibes. Um, but I might give in and read it um, in September if I just can't help myself uh, because it does sound really, really interesting. And this is the author I've been dying to try. So, uh, and then I also have, I read Winnie the Pooh last month, um, ended up kind of spur of the moment getting it and then read it. And I love Winnie the Pooh. And so one night when I was having insomnia, I decided to see, I got the full color gift edition of Winnie the Pooh and I decided to see if they had the full color gift editions in the other three books, which they did. And so insomnia brain, I said, I'm going to order them. Um, and so they are actually going to be arriving, I think tomorrow when I'm filming this. So I might read those ones as well if I can squeeze them in just because they're so cute and they make me so happy. And Winnie the Pooh just makes me happy. I still frequently watch the movies. So I might add in those. Um, but you can see if I do at my wrap up. So that is it. Um, I'm also going to be working on, not it. <laughs> I just saw this book sitting there. This is called Spillover Animal Infections and the Next Human Pandemic by David Quammen. I did kind of start it. I've only read a few pages. But so far, pretty enjoyable and definitely something I'm interested in. I'm planning on working on this one kind of slowly. So this one I might be reading as well. But if I get don't get pick this one up for the whole month of September, I'm not worried about it. This is just one that kind of caught my interest when I was looking 
for another Q author. So um, now that's it. I know this video is getting a little bit longer, which my videos tend to be. Let me know which of these books you are most excited for um, as far or which of these books you are most interested in if any of them and if not let me know what you're most excited to read in September uh, and yeah I'll go ahead and leave you guys here happy reading everyone bye